Hey everybody and Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us for Watch Parties here as we pursue Jesus together and grow as disciples of Jesus. And I want to remind you that our Rooted course is up and live on the website. You can click in the link in the description of this video or visit our website at cccbrockport.org and uh, click on Rooted to find out more about those videos, those questions, and just the way to get engaged in who we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there together as a church family. Um, but we are going to have a great discussion, and actually it's perfect. It's, it's lining up perfectly. It's almost like we planned it, we <laughs> but we not. didn't, because <laughs> no. um, we're working through the 99 essential doctrines, and this week actually has to do with prayer and miracles, mm -hmm. and we're about to start, or actually really just did start, a uh, month of prayer and fasting, Yeah, and uh, it's going to be great to talk about uh, prayer and miracles together. So Elijah, why don't you kick us off and, and tell us a little bit about prayer. Yeah, well, prayer uh, definitely is an amazing thing. The people I admire most probably in our church are the people who wow. are just our prayer warriors. And prayer is such, I think, sometimes such a minimized thing, but it actually is one of the biggest things we can do in our Christian walk. The Bible teaches that although God has a plan and will, prayer is often the means God uses to accomplish His divine purpose. Uh, John Wesley uh, says that God does nothing except in response to, to believing prayer. Uh, we see in the Bible also that Jesus taught us to pray to the Father in private and not to impress anyone else. He wants an authentic prayer for, from us. He doesn't need it to look like any specific holy Christianese way. Mm -hmm. He wants it from the heart, yeah. from us. He also taught that uh, that he one day he told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Mm -hmm. He also lit, Jesus also taught us to live a lifestyle of prayer. Um, we see this in several passages in Matthew 14, Mark 1 and 6, Luke 5 and 6, John 11 and 17, all throughout the Gospels. Uh, specifically, John, uh, Luke 5, 16 says, but Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. It makes me think of uh, Jesus in uh right before he was led to the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he would go back to his disciples who were sleeping. And he was saying, can't you just stay up <laughs> one hour with me to pray? <laughs> Prayer was super important to Jesus. And to live like Jesus, we must develop a habit and lifestyle of daily prayer. And it is true that prayer changes things. And it is also true that God uses prayer to change our hearts so that our will comes into alignment with his. And Pastor Lee Cummings, I know Pastor Brad, you've shared this a lot and I love it because it's so true. Uh, Pastor Lee for, from the Radiant Network says, prayer is not what we do before the work, it is the work. It's not, uh, the, it's not the secondary thing we go to. If we want to put the big, take out and pull out our biggest weapons to go to battle, mm -hmm. prayer is the biggest weapon that we need to do to do the work uh, that we are called to. Yeah. So join us. This whole month, every Wednesday, yes. this is you know not the only place you should be praying, um, but we are going to be gathering every Wednesday this month in the sanctuary for prayer and worship, and we're going to have different leaders every night leading in different themes and sections of scripture so that we can pray, as you just said, in alignment yeah. with God's will and with God's heart. And I was just kind of laughing because you were talking about the disciples sleeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. And you know, when, when we pray, it, it's funny because... We pray before we eat. We pray when we took our kids, uh, you know, in, in bed at, at night and things like that. But we're talking about a, a very drastically, radically different kind of mm -hmm. prayer than, than just the ritual of prayer. We're talking yeah. about a lifestyle of prayer. So come develop that uh, with us on Wednesday nights this month. Be fun. Um, pairing very, very well with that, I think, is uh, shifting to talk now about miracles. And I want to say it this way, that... Miracles should be the expectation of every New Testament praying believer yeah. in Jesus. Every follower of Jesus, every New Covenant believer in Jesus should be praying and expecting miracles to happen. Miracles are what happen when we pray. Mm -hmm. uh, another way of putting it is that a miracle is an event in which God makes an exception to the natural order of things. Okay, so, so a miracle is like not how it would typically go, not how it would normally evolve in the process of, of how nature normally works. Um, or he supersedes natural laws for the purpose of demonstrating his glory and or validating his message. Uh, miracles are recorded all throughout scripture. Abraham and Sarah, who were barren in their old age, ended up having a son Isaac from the promise that God gave them. 
Um, Moses carried out all kinds of signs and wonders, the plagues in Egypt, the parting of the Red Sea, um, uh, the miracles that happened in the wilderness to, to sustain the Israelites on their way to the promised land. Nehemiah built the wall around Jerusalem in 52 days. Many consider that to be very unusual, very miraculous timetable for the, the kind of project that that was. All kinds of, I mean, we could be here all day listening yeah. that, you know, Joshua prayed that the sun would stand still, you know, all kinds of crazy things. Jesus healed the blind, the deaf, the disabled, the afflicted, the demon possessed. Surely his resurrection would be called a miracle, you know? That's not the normal process of things. And you might be saying to yourself what a lot of us, I think, say, um, but I've never seen a miracle. And it's funny, we just got done with Christmas. One of my favorite Christmas movies is The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. And I was thinking about miracles. I was thinking about this question of like, but I haven't seen miracles or I, I don't often see miracles. Um, and there's a really funny dialogue in The Santa Claus where Charlie, Scott Calvin's son, is talking to his mom's new boyfriend, Neil, who's a psychiatrist. And Neil's saying, but have you ever seen Santa? To Charlie the boy. And, and Charlie says, well, have you ever seen a million dollars? And Neil says, no. And he says, well, but don't you believe it exists? And yes, of course. And the, the, it's the whole Christmassy theme of like seeing is not believing and all of that. Well, mm -hmm. um, I, I would say it this way. We should all have a theology of miracles, but it would be much better for all of us to actually have our own experience yeah. with miracles, right? Just because you haven't seen miracles doesn't mean that God doesn't do miracles, I guess would be another way of saying it. Let me tell a quick personal story. When I was in college, the Bible school that we both went to um, at different times, um, <laughs> I was in one of my classes uh, having to do, uh, you know, ironically enough, with Acts and the letters of Paul. And so um, we were talking and, and uh, discussing these letters about the New Testament church. And my teacher, Sylvia Evans, who is about as biblical a character I've ever had in my life, like, you know, Sylvia <laughs> Evans, just kind of scary and intimidating and, and just really like, really had a serious lifelong commitment and faith in the Lord to do miracles. And so she comes into class one day and she goes, before we get to any kind of lesson, the Holy Spirit told me to walk around, lay hands on each of you and pray. Now, previous to this, I'd had a few weeks of pretty constant pain in my jaw. My sister had uh, TMJ when she was younger, and I was just kind of like stressing out about that. I was thinking I should probably go to the doctor, go to the dentist or something to figure out what was going on with this pain that I was having. Um, but it was constant. Every day I was having issues. And I'm sitting there in class, and, and this teacher, Sylvia, walks around and just lays hands on us and just prays over us. Pretty general prayers, nothing specific. And I realized about 10 minutes after that prayer that I had no pain, absolutely zero pain in my jaw. Never had pain again, have never had pain in my jaw since that moment. You might be thinking that's kind of a coincidence or that just happened to be a moment where my body like got over it. Not to, for me, for me it's a miracle. For me it's something very unexpected. The touch and power of Jesus through this anointed person's life that caused a miracle to happen in my life. And, uh, you know, my theology for miracles is good, but my experience with miracles also kind of backs that up. Right. Um, it, it makes me think, you know, when we're tossing out this question of, but I've never seen miracles or I'm scared to pray for miracles. What if it doesn't happen? Um, and it kind of reminds me, I just want to have a little fun right now. Um, it, it makes me think of like playing the lottery. Okay. Now, just to be really clear, I don't think that miracles involve luck the way that lottery winners are just lucky when they win. But just go with me for a second. Um, the odds of winning the lottery are about 1 in 175 million. That's not very good odds. Yet, millions upon millions of Americans every day buy tickets to play the lottery just because of the chance that it can happen, right? Right. Um, in fact, New York State is the highest lottery playing state in the U.S. The most people that buy... New York... Um, New Yorkers shell out about $9 billion a year to play the lottery across our state. Crazy. Every year across America, there are hundreds of millions of what they call small pot winners. So the little scratch offs where you win 15 bucks or something like that. Hundred, hundreds of millions of small pot winners. And that certainly goes into the addiction of playing the lottery. Um, in 2017, there were seven winning tickets that year in America for the mega millions jackpot across the US. So kind of a difference there in like the bigger jackpots. And I started thinking about this. What if, and we don't have these statistics, but just a what if here. What if for every 100 people you or I prayed for, only a few of them got healed? 
You know, what, what if we just went with that kind of line of thinking? Wouldn't it still be worth it to pray for people at, at that clip? You know, even if 90% of the people you pray for don't experience a miracle, if 10% of them did, that's still worth doing. Now, I believe God can do anything. He can do well beyond what I would ask for, think, or imagine. Um, and that leads me to want to pray for radical things. Uh, one thing I know for sure, you are guaranteed 100% that zero miracles will, ha- will happen if you pray for zero miracles, right? Uh, let me say that maybe in a clearer way. Out of zero prayers for miracles, you'll be 100% guaranteed to see zero miracles if you right. never pray for them. So I just want to challenge you to um, just in your own heart right now, maybe address, maybe, maybe just challenge yourself right now. Okay, um, I might not see a miracle every single time, but I should be praying. This is something every New Testament believer should be praying for and believing and just claiming and proclaiming, I believe God can and does do miracles. Mm-hmm. Um, and Acts 4, 29 and 30 is a great prayer for you to grab hold of. The, the New Testament believers in the early church, they were hearing about Peter and John, how they had been brought into the temple and, and told not to preach Jesus anymore. And they, they came back, they're having church, they have, they're having a watch party kind of meeting, right? And they're sharing all these stories. And then they began to pray and they said, God, give us, your servants, great boldness to preach your word. And then verse 30, Acts 4.30, stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And at that, the place where they were gathering was shaken at the power of God, confirming that he would answer their prayer. It's a great prayer for us to pray. And just to summarize everything we've kind of talked about together today, we are all called to a lifestyle of prayer. Prayer changes things around us and maybe more importantly, changes us as we pray. And we should all have a theology for miracles, but even more so, we should all have experiences, true experiences with the miraculous of what God can do beyond what we would ask for, think, or imagine. And the best way to experience miracles is to constantly pray, or as Jesus uh, shared that you talked about, that we would pray and never give up. So we're going to send this into some discussion with your watch party now. I hope you have a great time discussing this. And I hope you'll join us at our Wednesday night prayer meetings throughout the month and this Sunday for church where we'll be uh, talking about our new series, Stolen Throne. We'll see you soon. Have a great rest of your week.